Alex participated in a living wax museum where he researched and dressed up as an important historical figure. He chose a man whose work improved and saved more lives than any other person in history. Yet most people have never heard of him. My name is Norman Borlaug. Some people call me the father of the Green Revolution. I was born in Cresco, Iowa in 1914. When Burlog was young, his family purchased a tractor for their farm. This allowed him time away from the farm to continue his education. This and other lessons from the farm gave him a foundation he would build his work on. I learned about the importance of food security during the Great Depression. In college, Burlog would wait tables in exchange for food to eat. He also witnessed violent riots when people faced food shortages. He worked as a forester and then for DuPont after college. In 1944, Burlog went to work for the Rockefeller Foundation, which was working to address world hunger. I was hired to help Mexico grow more food for their people. My job was to help farmers overcome wheat rust, which destroys wheat crops. Wheat rust is caused by a fungus and can wipe out entire fields of wheat. It has been a problem for farmers for thousands of years, but a growing world population meant even more strain on agriculture demands. For Mexico to become self-sufficient in producing food, it would need rust-resistant wheat. I started by planting over 8,000 wheat varieties in a test field. Only four of them didn't get rust. I used those four plants to start a breeding program, developing wheat varieties with high yields and other good traits, which took a lot of work. Wheat is self-pollinating, which means to get a cross between two varieties, you have to interrupt the natural pollination cycle. Pollens must be carefully removed by hand, and then the flowers protected from pollen blowing in the air. Then, the flowers must be hand-dipped in the pollen from the variety the breeder wants to cross it with. It is very tedious work, and it requires lots of organization and great record-keeping. Burlog also bucked convention and created a process called shuttle breeding. This allowed him to grow two crops a year, a summer crop in the south and a winter crop in the north. His bosses didn't give him any budget or resources for this, but Burlog's dogged determination saw it through. In the north, he slept in an abandoned shack with no windows, no water, and no electricity. He used dried corn cobs as fuel to heat cans of beans to eat. He had no tractor or work animals when he started, so he pulled the plow himself. Over several years and lots of hard work, he developed wheat varieties that were rust-resistant, had high yields, and good baking character. He even crossed them with dwarf wheat plants from Japan, which kept the wheat from getting too tall and falling over in the field. By 1956, Mexico was self-sufficient in producing its own food. My work increased the yield per acre of Mexico's wheat crop by 4.5 times. I took their wheat varieties and farming techniques developed in Mexico to India and Pakistan, and then to many other developing countries. It is estimated that I saved over a billion people from starving. Burlog's legacy is a world with far greater food security, and it's that food security which makes peace, prosperity, and justice possible. He is quoted as saying, You can't build a peaceful world on empty stomachs in human misery. In 1970, I was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for all of my work. Burlog was also a successful educator teaching others his breeding techniques, and teaching farmers about good production practices. He even taught as a professor, including Texas A&M University. Woo! <laughs> My work
work still helps feed the world today. That is how I became known as the father of the Green Revolution. Thank you, Dr. Burlog, and thank you, Alex, for teaching everyone about this important man and all of his work.